Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Welcome to your day off. My name is Corey. And guess what? I'm all alone today, but I am still the host of the Your Day Off podcast. Um, today, I'm actually uh, bringing on, um, uh, I, I say, I, I, you know, Tony, Tony's been my best friend for years, but this is my OG hair friend. This is my friend that, um, that, uh, that we actually, we literally commuted to work or to, uh, to school every day. So we were just kind of like doing the math and we're like, man, we spent like an hour every day during hair school together. And, um, or maybe a couple hours, I guess, I guess commute was, a uh, was a little bit, uh, less than an hour, but a couple hours every day in the car. And we just, we became really, really good friends. And, um, it, it's funny, like, as you do this entire career that we, uh, you know, for so many years, you're just in your salon and they're in their salon and like, just kind of like pumping it out and kind of learning the industry. And now now, um, and just like the podcast, like we've, you know, we've created something for, for the bigger industry, you know, not just the salon industry, um, our, our friend Vanessa today, um, she's actually, she's, she's created her own audience and she's, she's reaching out from, um, inside the salon too. And I just find her story fascinating. I find, um, I find where, 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 where we're finding the industry, um, just, it's all about timing, I think. So, um, without any further ado, I want to invite my friend Vanessa Rose and Vanessa, welcome to the show, man be here with you today one of my favorite peeps definitely isn't it kind of amazing though like you know we were talking about it right before we got on that just 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 it's so cool to kind of like watch like when you can watch like yourself almost and somebody else's growth you know yes, it's like, like it's like i measure i measure my own success by the the people that i love are around me and so when you're winning and you're succeeding, it's like, oh my gosh, like I had a little bit to do with his journey. And it, it just, it, it just feels good. And I'm so proud of you. And dude, ditto and same. Like, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of, of what, as a matter of fact, I was thinking about this right before we got on. I think, I think you were the, out of our like group, out of our peer group, I think you were the youngest like salon owner. I think you took the dive before anybody else kind of in our, certainly to my memory, um, in our, in our, in our peer group. I was 29. When you started the salon? When I started Maud, yeah, I was 29. That's crazy. Way, I love that. Where did the name Maud come from? Um, well, M-O-D Maud means fashionable Vogue, but, um, I think there might have been some spirits in the air, a little alcohol brewing and perhaps something else floating in the air. And we were inspired to change it to a woman's name and make her our muse. So it's M-A-U-D-E, Maud. It, it definitely gives me a, a Golden Girl vibes there. Uh-huh, yeah. Was there a character named Maud or am I making that up? There, no, there was, there was. That's cool. So, so the spirit of Maud is over Maud. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, she's, that, that's muse. she's our muse. She's, she's our, our muse. muse. She, and, and she's amusing. That's and I love when people call here and they're like, um, I'd like to book an appointment with Maud. I'm like, she's not in. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, that happens? I, I, you that know, does that happen. Totally makes sense. That, that totally you know, they want the owner, right? Like, let me book with the owner. And then I think the owner is Maud. That's funny. We had a, we had a friend years ago. This is before we got in the hair industry. Um, we had a friend. His name was Guy. G U Y. Right. And the salon owner made him change his name because he didn't want someone to say, I, my last haircut was with guy instead of like, was with some guy. Right. Because there, there was okay. a lot of boys that worked there. So he made it, he literally made him change his name. So there wouldn't be any confusion about who the guy was. That's funny. Well, that's like, if I get, you know, another Brittany or Isabel that shows up in the salon, I'm like, Whoever gets here with the name first, you get to keep the name. Otherwise, you got to come up with another name because it's way too confusing. This Isabel, this Isabella, you know, all of the that, things. That, that's us and Katie. Like you, there was like three Katie's in the salon and right. then, you know, they, had, they all had to come up with do. And what, what sucks is like if, if, if it's a new Katie to your salon, they have an old clientele that know her as Katie. 
Right. <laughs> you know, and you got to reteach them. <laughs> got to reteach them and so much. Conf- oh my gosh. It's so <laughs> the, the blues of, uh, all right. of salon ownership, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. minor. Dude, that's so wild, man. That's crazy. Dude, so just, I, I can't believe it's taking this long, first off. So, uh, you know, for, for, forgive my my tardiness to to this conversation, but but also, you know, w- welcome to welcome to the show. You Thank know? you for having me. I'm so happy to be here with you. Dude, it I want to kind of get into well, first off, let's talk about let's talk about your new salon conception, which is um um uh help me out, mage and mage mage, and mage and main magic mage. hair, mage and main. I love that. So uh, tell me about tell me about that and and I'm also in let's get into that and then I'll we'll jump in. Well, so I'm 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 a light worker, I'm an energy healer, um, as well as, you know, a master craft hairstylist. And I have been wanting for years, you know, I teach energy and connection in, in the beauty space. Um, I wanted a place where I could practice fusing energy healing along with um hair cutting, cord cutting and in a ceremonial format. So, you know, I I flow with it and Lo and behold, the space right above my salon becomes available and I turn it into a beautiful little healing space where I do ceremonial work with my guests. So I spend about three to four hours with each guest, taking them through a journey and experience that's curated for them and um, includes an intention setting and cord cutting release along with some energy healing work. I have a head spa, so I do these beautiful scalp treatments and then we we finish with a cord cut and haircut which invites in new energy and releases the old so it's a really beautiful practice and i'm thoroughly enjoying it and i'll be teaching it in 2025 and sharing it with the beauty magic makers that's all. So are you, oh, hold on. I'm so many questions, Vanessa. I'm sorry. So are you working behind the chair as a hairstylist in the hair salon as well? And, and, and so, if that's the case, like, how are you splitting that time up? Yeah. You know, it's, I was like, I hope, I hope Corey doesn't ask me what I do on my day off because <laughs> okay. I have a lot of day offs right now. <laughs> I haven't um, found that anybody that's super successful has a day off, <laughs> frankly. I have Maud, which is the salon that I've had for 21 years, uh, along with my partner, Celeste, and we're an apprenticeship salon. So, you know, I, I take young people into the industry and we teach them how to do hair and bring them up through our level system, blah, 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 blah. And that's been an amazing journey and a wonderful experience. Then I work there as a hairdresser three days a week. And then I work out of my healing space, Mage and Main, doing one-on-one ceremonies with guests two times a week, typically. You know, they're three to four hour sessions. And um, and then, of course, I teach in the beauty industry, and that keeps me busy coaching and with my Joyful Chair platform. Let me so ask this. So those two, those two times a week that you're uh, that you're upstairs doing the the mage the major main work the magical hair work like at the end of the day are you just like spent? No, it's 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 so crazy. It is so crazy, Corey. Like I can you know I I can crank out ten guests down at Mod and I walk out of here and I'm exhausted. Right? I can do two guests same amount of time in that space and I am charged up. But when you, when you begin to channel energy and, and you're doing calling that energy upon so that you can be a conduit to, to share and spread somebody else's energy more efficiently, you get charged up. So I walk out of there and I'm like, God, I feel so good. So no, it's not, it's not the same thing. It's a totally different vibe. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I was, I guess I would, I was thinking if it, a, how much energy it takes to to share that energy, but but you're saying it, it's the opposite, you know. Well, it's not my energy necessarily that I'm giving to someone. I'm calling energy from source, and it's moving through me. I'm just a conduit. Mm. So the, so there's a little left. There's a little energy left there. There's yeah, you, like, get a little charge up. Get a little charge up there. <laughs> well, yeah. 
well, I, I'll, I'll say I, we talked about this before, too, as well, is that um, yesterday I had the privilege of, of hanging out with a Gino Stampora and uh, and he introduced me to Tracy. Help me with her last name, Vanessa Tracy. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to destroy it. OK, um, well, let's not destroy it. So Tracy, who is Tracy salon training? Salon oh. training is her platform. That's it. And and Tracy's she, lovely. And she does the Pennsylvania like hair show. That's like wh- where is that? at seven springs she's she's incredible what she has accomplished um gathering four thousand hairdressers in the middle of pennsylvania to come together and the amount of talent that she's got showing up to do that event is just incredible i've thoroughly enjoyed it i've made i've met some amazing people worked alongside amazing artists and i'm proud of her too well, she's, We're all doing listen, things, listen, things. listen, both Gino and Tracy were telling me about how incredible your joyful chair um, um, class is. And, and as a matter of fact, Tracy said that that it was one of the highest like when she did her post show things that it was uh, her post show surveys that that it was the it was the class that got a lot of attention and the attention that I got is that we need more of this and not only do yeah. we need this, but we need a bigger room for Vanessa so she can, so she can touch more people and reach more people. And I, again, I just, I find that like, again, as a friend of yours and what we were talking about before, just like the only thing that like kind of, you know, rushes through my body is just how proud I, I am of you and how proud I am that, 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 that you found this, this audience and that you're also like, um, Change, changing lives and it, not to be hyper, hi, hi, what word am I looking for? Hyperbolic, right? Not to be hyperbolic, but, but just that, you know, like you, you're, you, you, you have the opportunity to change lives, I guess is the best way to put it. Oh, thanks. Um, you know, it's so interesting. I, I said this to you before, like, I mean, you know, I've been teaching energy and connection in the beauty space. I was a platform artist for Graham Webb for years. And it, this isn't new to me, what I'm, what I'm teaching or I'm talking about. What's, it's just the time. The, the beauty industry is ready. The beauty industry is ready to accept that, you know, salons are sacred spaces again, you know, and I'll thank COVID for, for that. Hairdressers are, are even more proud of their craft than I think they previously would have been. And our whole concept of time is a little bit different. We've kind of gone from that hustle culture into a little bit more of like, holiness culture and things being sacred to us and taking pride in the time that we're spending with our guests and, and the curate creation of the work that we're doing. And I think um, just the time is now like hairdressers are healers. And I think we're all recognizing that the majority of us are empaths and we need to protect ourselves and transform that energy. And we really have an ability to create a safe space for our guests to download their lives literally in our hands. And that is such a gift. And it's such a a precious thing to share with someone way beyond the creation of the craft of hair and beauty and all the things. It's just so much deeper than that. Well, I, 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 so I want, I want some information. I don't know a lot about joyful chair, you know, and, and, but, but, um, and we talked about this earlier as well, but like, like as a skeptic, I'm not skeptical, but but I approach sure. things as a skeptic all the time. Like, you know, where's it? I think it's just a way to kind of like balance myself in a weird way and not, you know, jump off, you know, whatever. So kind of as a skeptic, kind of kind of explain to me what the joyful chair is and, and, and the impact that it has, you know, not on my chair necessarily, but but on the uh, the people that are sitting in our chair and ourselves for that matter. Well, I can guarantee that you have a joyful chair. That, you know, before you lay your hands on anybody, you subconsciously, if not consciously, make sure that you're right and that you're not bringing your crapola to dump on your client, right? That that's her, that's her, his or her time, their space to recharge, to enjoy, to, to connect with the beauty within and, and the beauty outside as well. So the concept of joyful chair is like, how do we energetically align ourselves so that we can provide this safe, loving environment for our guests to relax and recharge. And most of all, for us to, to stand in and to be in while we're being creative, because the minute we're in the space of creation, we're in 
source energy or God's energy or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's all love. That's all loving energy, love's vibration. So, you know, I ebb and flow with physics and woo. And some people don't like the term woo. I don't mind the term woo. Um, you know, it, it really, really, it's called religion in some ways, which is call it spells. You know, everybody has a different term for it. Physics calls it energy. It's all the same thing. We're talking about vibration. We're talking about a frequency. And what channel are you tuning yourself into? And can you get your guest to tune into that same channel? And if you are tuned into the same channel, the outcome more than likely is going to be a positive outcome. If your intention is set correctly. If you I like well, so so it comes down to that. C- comes down to the intention and, and what what the intention is. Everything. Um, that's it. So, how, how does it in a in a real way? How does this work? You know, either at like mange or how does it um or how does it work behind the chair for you? Like in a in a like in a real like what are those conversations like with your clients or how have they changed over the years? So I um I practice and I I share a practice that I live in called protecting your personal energy, which is all about keeping my aura, my space, my salon space, um, sacred and a high vibration and not allowing the negativity to sink in and get stuck there. And, uh, something as simple as calling your energy back to you, you know, in between clients or before you start your day, you know, I might say, I call my energy back to me from all places, spaces and time. I return your energy back to you with love. Like that's just clearing my field, but I'm creating that intention, right? Because it all comes down to intention. So if I've created the intention that I'm going to be my fully bright vibrational self, I'm then able to fully give to the person that's sitting in my chair and I'm able to receive better as well. What, what, um, what, what was your learning path to get here? (laughs) Um, yeah, a lot of hard knocks. I mean, you know, you know me, Corey, you've known me since I was 19. I was, you know, I was a wild child. I was an artist. I was a a wild child, made a a lot of mistakes, stood on the edge of the cliff while the rocks were falling underneath me, had a child when I was 19. And that woke me up, grew me up really quickly. And it really, uh, not to say I wasn't spiritual before then, but that definitely created a shift in me where I needed to connect with something bigger and greater than myself and therein began the journey and you know a lot of other things happened through my life I was I was very ill about 20 years ago and you know spirit just um, stepped in to help guide me along that path but what but but I guess my question is, and I guess this is a friend to friend conversation. This is this is those deep car conversations that we had during the commute, but like 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 how did you land on this path as opposed to like a traditional like religious path, you know, be it the big three, you know, um um yeah. religion? I think well I was I was raised in the church. So, you know, I did grow up with uh more religious teachings. I think what that did for me is it created a lot of fear and a lot of uh, felt a lot of judgment, a lot of fear and a, a lot of confines. And this is not to knock anybody else's spiritual belief. I'm down for whatever is going to make you feel full and, um, and filled with light. Um, it well, just I think, didn't. I think, I think it's also important to, to, to um, at least to acknowledge that, that religion and church are two different places. Yes. Right? You know, exactly. so, so like, you know, whatever your relationship with, within a religion is, um, doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily dictate the, res- the, the, uh, relationship that you have with the church and the church's teachings. Yes, exactly. You know, it's all up to interpretation, all of it. Um, my, my grandmother was, uh, she was a witch, you know, there for all of intents and purposes purposes. She was a tea leaf reader and um, a spiritual woman who had a little bit of a broader view beyond just the Abrahamic traditions that um, I was necessarily raised in. And when I was very young, um, 
um, I was introduced to some of those beliefs and, you know, getting in the rhythm and the cycles of the earth and the seasons and you know, a lot of these festivals that, you know, were celebrated for thousands and thousands and thousands of years before Christ even walked the planet. We have now turned into holidays that, you know, we, we follow through Abrahamic traditions. I love the way you phrase that, by the way, Abrahamic, tra- what? Abrahamic <laughs> tradition. I love that. This is- yeah. That's yeah, that's what it is, right? Yeah, it, it totally is. And it, it's also interesting, again, just with a little history of religion that, you know, most of our most of our big holidays are are are, are based in like some kind of like paganism or some kind yeah. of, you know, like, like tradition, you know, based in some kind Which of tradition. Just means we're following, you know, we're following the natural cycle of, of the planet and the earth. We're paying attention to the seasons We're we're respecting Gaia We're you know, we're following the harvest. These are the natural, they call it, they call it the turning of the wheel. We're following the turning of the wheel. So I think, you know, what I do is kind of uh, a mixture of all of that and very eclectic. And, um, you know, for a long time, I felt weird when somebody called me a witch because it was like a bad thing. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm a hair witch. I'm a witch. I'm embracing it. I'm good with it. It's, it's totally fine. I'm a good human and I'm a light worker. and. I'm not a, I'm not a black, dark being. I'm a light being. Oh, you're like a good witch. You're like, you're like, yeah, good. Glenda, man, you my magic wand. However, didn't we learn during Wicked that, you know, even the Wicked Witch wasn't that Wicked? Right. Or she was, yeah. be, I don't know, forced to be Wicked. I don't know. I, <laughs> oh, and off the record, I can't wait for that movie. I think it comes out soon, right? Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Oh my God, that show is so great. It, is. it brings it me is. tears, you know, like I don't even like tears of joy when I, when I watch it, you know, it, it's, it's so magical. So, so, so you're going on the road and you're teaching this through like the joyful chair. So that's like your joyful yeah. chair is like your, 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 your education platform. Yeah. Joyful chair is the education platform, teaching energy and connection and how to turn up your magic and, um, you know, how, how to do, how to incorporate healing work into your practice behind your chair, whether it's for your guests or it's just simply for you to protect yourselves. Because I think what happens to a lot of artists in the beauty space, anybody who really lays their hands on people, you know, we, we become energetically drained. And a lot of that is because we've got blockages in our, I call them energy leaks in our, in our orc field. And we don't know how to fully protect ourselves from being the dumping ground that we can become very easily when we're dealing with guests. So, um, but but what is that protection? Like walk me through that. So like, especially like, I mean, you know, we're both in kind of the DC area and there's, yeah, the the one is for us is like politics and like, how do we just get us, just get us through, get us, get us through the, through to to December, please. Yeah. Washington is really but but Vanessa, I mean, I don't even these days. It just the the election cycle is just like every day, every week, every like we we never get away from it. You know, yeah, I don't, we don't. And I don't I don't pay attention anymore. And the reason is, you know, uh, again, because I, you're protecting your personal energy. Exactly. You that's intu- it. you intuitively know that that does not serve you. What what good is it going to do you? So you can keep up with your conver- a conversation that your guest wants to have. I'll listen, but I'm just not really, I'm just not really inclined to engage in anything that's going to lower my vibration. You know what? That's a, that's a great way to put it. I'm, I say it in a much lamer way. And that's uh that's that I I'm not, I'm not mature enough to have a relationship with the news, you know? So like what happens is like, I watch it, I obsess about it and then I can't let it go for hours and hours and hours. And it makes me completely unproductive. Um, e- even in my own well being, it, be- it, it creates like this space where I'm unproductive and that, and that, uh, um, I'm angry. I'm, I'm, but you know, it's not even about the anger is what I've realized is that cause sometimes it's even stuff that I agree with. Now I've got to go find someone to tell, to tell them that, you know, how smart I am. Right. And, 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 and that's not that that doesn't serve me the way that I think it's going to serve me. It only like, you know, now I'd spend half the day looking for someone to tell them exactly how I think. 
And that that's a weird vibration as well to me. Yeah. You know, I just don't I don't have I'm I'm not mature enough to have a relationship with the news or certainly the one that I want. Um, I feel like my only responsibility is every four years I get the opportunity to vote. I'll do that, and then the the, the other 364 days of the year, like I'm not I'm not absorbing it. You know, um, it, now it's impossible not to see headlines and not to see this and not to see that. But but I'm trying very, very hard not to absorb that energy anymore. And I'd much rather speak to my friends like Vanessa about, you know, about about self-awareness than I am interested in yeah. learning about, you know, whose fault it is today. Yeah, exactly. Whose fault it is today. But I mean, you're intuitively you're intuitively protecting your energy and, you know, that practices like that, like. Don't engage with things that are going to be a low vibration. What are you listening to? What are you, what are you consuming? What are, what are you consuming information wise? What are you consuming food wise? Are you, are you eating low vibrational foods? You know, are you running to McDonald's on your way into work or did you choose to get a smoothie and, you know, eat an apple? You know, the, it, it's all vibration. It all has something to do with the way that we feel and in turn, the environment that we create for our guests to feel. And, you know, I, I've been doing this for 31 years now, or is it 32 for you? We're about the same. You know, it's a long, it's a long time to still be loving doing hair and working with the team and working with guests. And the only reason why I believe I still love it is because I've learned how to control my own energy and and to create a a safe and, and sacred space that I feel comfortable being creative in. You know what? You brought up a good point. And, um, and it just dawned on me that like um, when people are sitting in our chair, they are consuming us. Yeah. So, you know, what are we giving them to consume, you know, and, and, and can we create a better space or not a better space necessarily, but, but can we create a space where we're not giving them the same thing that they consume that they can consume on the news or the whatever, you know, I don't, if we can create like a, a space where they're consuming a little bit different than that, or, mm-hmm. or something a little bit more meaningful than that. Um, and, and, and I think, I think, I think, and you talk about burnout, there'd be no quicker way for me for burnout. And this has happened in the years. Cause trust me, it's, t- it took me 25 years to realize that I'm not mature enough for the news. Right. That took a long time to, to figure out. Um, but, but, talk about burnout like if i'm having those conversations all the time you feel that i mean it's basically trauma dumping with but not being called trauma right it's it's like we're calling it something yeah. else. we're calling it some kind of other engagement but in fact it is trauma dumping in fact it is like you know how, how we position these 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 conversations is exactly that but you know if if we can you know to use your words if we can kind of have these conversations through light that that that, that seems a little bit more uplifting and now Actually, I'm starting to get why, uh, why why you're energized. You know, when when you do your energy practice um, at the at the end of the day, I, I I'm start I'm start I'm starting to realize that I'm starting to see that a little bit. You know, you you've done hair for a long time, and I think um, just call me I old. Think, not calling me old. Uh, you're old. You're old. I'm old. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm I'm embracing it. Like you know, I I said to you earlier, I like myself better today than I did you know when I was 19, 20 years old. Like you know, you keep growing, you keep evolving. But I think when you've done hair and you've worked with guests or whether you're an esthetician or you know, anybody in the beauty space um, and you've worked with guests for a very long time, there's a wisdom that comes from that. Like you're, you naturally begin to listen to your intuition. You, you know what's going to work. You know what a client's insecurity is. You, you just have a direction because we've learned how to hold the energy in that space and let our little antennas come up to, to bring awareness to what needs to happen, right? That's, that's intuitive hair crafting. And that's also part of, of what it is that I teach. But um, yeah, you just, you have a wisdom with it when you've done it for a long time. And in order to keep going and to keep enjoying being joyful chair, enjoying doing the work that we do, you got to protect yourself and you've got to make sure that the space around you, the team around you, the people around you are high vibrational beings and that everybody is uh, focused on trying to stay in that space of love and not dive down the rabbit hole of fear and toxicity and negativity and all those things. Mm, that's a great perspective to it all because it, it kind of seems like that, 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 
that ends up being the conversation. If you allow that to be the conversation, you know, the fear and the toxic, you uh-huh. know, we, we, we talk about like, we talk about like a, uh, certainly there's conversation about talking about toxic salons and stuff, but you know, what are you, what are you bringing to that toxic um, environment? And, and um, I mean, we've talked about this on the podcast a lot. Like I wish, I wish we could get to the point and this isn't just about salons, but just in the human experience. I wish we could get to the point that we realize that maybe a relationship just run its course. Right. Mm. And so I call that contract ending. Like we make contracts with each other. And, you know, sometimes contracts just end. You can go with love. You know, I don't have to hold you hostage to the hurt that you created or the mess that we created. Yeah. Just the contract just ended. I, I, I love that. And I might, I might steal that from you, Vanessa. But yeah. No need to kind of like burn the field behind you. You yes. know, um, we, 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 and, and again, I'm only speaking from a place of guilt. I'm only speaking that when I've left salons, you know, I I told you exactly why that was a shitty salon, although I was there for 17 years loving it, you know, but the moment I left was the time that it was shitty. You know what I mean? Like I'm a thousand percent guilty to uh, of that. And every salon I've ever left or every, every time I've moved on, um, this is a heartfelt apology for that. I know better now, you know, and, and, and the, and the conversations that I have with myself now are like, okay, it was just time. It was time. You know, I kind of look at it like this, like, um, even with our clients and, and certainly like when I've lost clients over the years, a lot of times there's indicators. A lot of times I can kind of feel like, oh, okay, this could be the last one or we're definitely on the path of this is going to be the end of this relationship for whatever reason. It's just, it, it's just a feeling, you know, I don't even know if it's like real or not. It's just a feeling. Um, but, uh, but it is real because you're an intuitive. So you, you know, you know, that's why, that's why. Jane's name pops in your head and you're like, whoa, I haven't seen her in a while. And then you look and it's been like four months and you're like, okay, either something's happened to Jane or Jane's left me. Let me recall what our last experience together was like. You know, how did I show up energetically? How did Jane show up energetically? For sure. You know, for sure. You know, that's, that's, that, that's it. Right. You know, so I guess you're right. It it, it is kind of real, right? I don't know. Yeah. But you know, I think I've also had those feelings and then they didn't leave. So I don't know how real it is for this. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it does? Here's what it does, though. It's like if you're if I'm feeling that, like, like, huh, I think this is coming to an end and I'm OK. You know, I'm OK with that. But it also it allows me to show up different. Like, well, what can I do? So it's not the end. You know, like, how am I how am I not serving them? Because we're in the service industry. How am I not serving them where they the where they need to serve? You know, and and and, and I can kind of reassess and evaluate myself going like, OK, well, you know, how, how do I need to say what again? What are they looking for that I'm not providing? You know, because ultimately that's our job, right? I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. that's our job as a whole, you know, I think too, like, you know, when, when you're a young stylist and you're hungry and you're trying to build your book and, you know, you, you want to kind of hold everything. Right. And the moment we begin to sort of let go of some of the reins and just trust the universe, trust source, whatever you want to call it, that, you know, the right people are going to land in our chairs. The right people are going to, um, be connections that rebook with us and then turn into relationships, i.e. Right. contracts. And, um, you know, sometimes those contracts end and we don't have to make it anybody's fault. They just, they just ended. That, that's, that's wise words, wise words. And, you know, certainly ones that, that I've been, that I've been preaching here for, for a few years now, you know, with that understanding, but, um, um, but I mean, even with that, I mean, salon owners are responsible too, right? Salon owners are like, Hey, listen, this could just be the end. I, I do think as an industry, we have a weird, we'll use the word contract. We have a weird contract with salon owners, ownership. It's where there's a lot of salon owners. that think they own you forever. You know, yeah. it's any kind of separation. You're like, Oh, that's like, it doesn't have to be weird. That's been a big part of my, I mean, to be honest, my learning, you know, process, um, because I grew up in a salon with that environment where, you know, the owner felt like he owned me. And then when I went off to do my own thing, you know, I wasn't wished well, it was met with some venom. And I knew when I opened Maud, I didn't want to operate in that same mentality. Yes, it hurts when people leave. It's really hard not to take it personal, especially when, you know, I literally put a pair of scissors in your hand. It was like, let me show you my craft. Let me hand it down to you. It's hard not to take it personal. But I think if you can 
um, remove the ego a little bit and, and think of Gerard Kearns was my mentor. And, you know, Gerard Kearns taught me, you know, I'm going to teach you everything I know, but you have to promise me that you're going to turn around and share this craft with someone else. So I took that very seriously. I still do um, in, in my life today. And if that really is my purpose is to hand down the craft to, to show another human the, the way of beauty magic, then whether they stay in my space working or they decide to go to a suite or move on and open their own salon or shift gears completely, my job is to wish them well and send them away in love, not in this, I'm holding on to everything, trying to grasp so tightly. That is, that is a low vibrational, that's a fear-based energy and it doesn't serve anybody. I love that you said it's a fear-based energy because I think that, that it's something to connect to. Like when you feel that, when you feel that, and, and like you said, like the ego, when the ego starts to like make decisions for you um, to say, yeah. like, what the, this is just fear based or this is based on not that person leaving or, or it, it's something bigger and, and greater than that or smaller than that. If it, you know, if you're talking internally, um, but, but just to have something to grasp onto and cause I live by mantras, bro, you know? Yeah. Like, well, oh my God. But you are so full of it. Like, Okay, you're intentional, you're intuitive, you live by mantras, you're literally when you do a mantra, you're literally you're 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 moving time. You're stepping forward in time. You're creating an intention. You're manifesting an outcome that you want to receive back to you from the universe. You're totally woo, dude. <laughs> I just don't call it woo. I just don't call it woo. Well, but you know, I, it just, for me, the mantra just checks my own ego, right? That's what it is. I mean, to me, it just, it just, it puts that in check. You know, um, I've used this example a thousand times. I think it's, I, I, I think it's the easiest way to kind of explain it because it's hard to explain it. But like, if I'm at the store and I open the door for somebody and they don't say thank you, like that used to irritate me. And, and, and now my mantra is like, I didn't open the door for a thank you. I opened it just to be a better citizen in the world, you know? And then, and what that does is that identifies, it identifies not that person, but it identifies myself in that situation and says like this is not why i did this this is not this is not about it you know um you know I, I try to live from a space of gifting and not a space of investment and 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 a thank you is the investment right but like if i live in that space of thank you i'll always be disappointed oh yeah. like you know like if I, and 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 I, i'm trying hard not to be disappointed in other people because that doesn't even make sense to me in a weird yeah. way, you know? Well, like, then you're in lack. You're you're in the energy of lack. If you're waiting for validation from something, some, oh, no, something no, outside no, no. I do you. like a little validation. You know, put me I in like a little validation, validation too. Like, well, we're good. A little praise. But if that's what I'm waiting for, if that's my motivating force, I'm setting myself up to be disappointed. If, if my motivating force is to be of service, to be a giving, loving person, heart a giving loving energy then that's what i'm going to receive back that's the gift have you done therapy breath work i have it's demonic like, therapy breath work therapy i teach a lot of these modalities dude like i like therapeutic breath work, breath work. With like 10 years of therapy yeah and it happened in an hour. I assume because when you do, when you're really doing breath work, you know, you, like time isn't time isn't a ticker. You know, yeah, really into it. Like we literally could have been there for five hours or one hour. I have no clue how long we were there, but I'm going to assume it's about an hour. Um, but so what you're you're moving energy through breath work. You're taking you're taking areas in your body that have I call it samskara, like energetic scars in your body, and you're you're shattering those energetic scars, you're taking stuck energy and you're moving it through your system, through your auric field to, to, to open it up with breath, which is a, a precious, a precious gift that we have. And, and we have the ability to control it, mm. which is amazing. That, that, that is amazing. I, 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 I realized during breath work that there is no healing with ego. Mm. you have Ooh. to kind of like move away from you you've, you've got to like set the ego aside surrender to, yeah you, you, you surrender and like i you know my my conversation with my ego was like i'm going to be the bully against my ego like you don't mm. belong here now this is not your space this is my space yeah and so and 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 what was interesting yeah. is like after the practice and i did it in a group there was 
50 of us, you know, make, could have which been, is even more powerful when you're doing it in uh, you, a you space want to hear, wild, you want to hear a wild story? Yeah. So, we're starting breath work. And again, it's 50 people. We're on a rooftop of this building, you know, so it's, and we're in Texas and it's like the, you know, the, the morning sun is coming out and it's kind of cozy, you know, a little chilly, a little crisp in the morning, but by the end you're sweating balls you know, because, because the sun has come up, but we're there. And, and the, um, the facilitators are saying, listen here, if you've never done breath work, here's the experience. Some of you are going to cry. Some of you guys are going to laugh out loud. Some of you got, there's all this emotional stuff, but don't be, don't be fearful of that. You know, either like, like as a practitioner next to that person, don't be fearful that they're laughing or crying or whatever. That's this is part of the experience. Um, you're only going to get in what you put in, or you're only going to get out what you put in, right? Um, and I remember sitting there going like, and not being resistant at all, but going like, I don't see how I'm going to be the one that cries, right? Like I just can't see that or laugh or, or anything. Like I don't see that that's happening. So, long story short, we finish at the end. I didn't have an emotional cry but my beard was soaked with tears. Like there was definitely oh, wow. some kind of like emotional release in that sense. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, I mean, some people were literally, you know, that kind of crying and it, it wasn't that, you know, and, and again, no judgment on that. Um, But like, it, it was amazing. Like, that I had like this kind of release that my body needed. And, you know, through the practice was a lot of like a lot of conversation. It was actually, it, the conversations were, I'll try not to get emotional now, but the conversations were me as a little boy talking to my mother who had, you know, who passed away when I was 21, you know, so it was like, what is this relationship? And, and kind of that conversation was, is she proud of the person that I am? Not the adult that I am, not, not any of that, but, but, but the person that I am and, and able to kind of like reconcile that because I think my whole life I've been pushing for that. Right. Like I just want her to be proud. Right. Like, like, and she is. Oh, I oh I know because I had a conversation with her during breath work. <laughs> you know, I love it. You know, like like, like we had that conversation, and and maybe that was the release. Maybe that's why it wasn't like a a hurtful release. Maybe maybe that yeah hurtful. And and my release wasn't that. My release was like, oh, I, I, I'm okay. You know, yeah. uh, the the one person that's proud of me is proud of me. You know. Mm -hmm. Here's mm -hmm. funny too, if I can like name drop for just a sec, but um, back in June, you know, we released that podcast where apparently if you talk about Taylor Swift on your podcast, like people care, um, but you okay. know, the podcast talking about Taylor Swift and the entire universe uh, heard about it. And um, uh, Tony and I were featured on like entertainment tonight and stuff. Go look it up. You'll see. Um, but we talked to uh, Travis Kelsey's barber and then we talked a little bit about the wedding and it just blew shit up. Anyways, long story short, my mom's best friend reached out to me because she saw it and she's like, and I, you know, we, we talk like every five years or something, but she just, it was very cool for her to reach out and just say like, you know, mom would be proud. And not just because of the Taylor Swift thing, but I think it was just a reminder to kind of reach out and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and she just, you know, again said, you know, your mom would be really proud of you. And it was kind of like, again, that breath work kind of like, you know, just, it just tied that knot a little bit, a little bit tighter. And, and that was the big takeaway and back to validation. That was incredibly validating coming from, a, from a mom's friend, but it wasn't validation I was looking for. It was just validation that showed up. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. which is well, and I would take it a step further and I would say that's your mom working through her friend to connect with you and let you know that she's a guiding light in your life. Well, now you just went woo on me. See, so I did. Just went woo. I did. I did. But I believe that, you know, I believe that when we lose people, especially people that we're very close to that their energy is, you know, it's, it's literally just like a sheet of paper between us. There's a, there's a famous medium that teaches that. And, um, but that all we have to do is call upon our ancestors or spirit guides or angels, you know, or source, whoever you like to talk to, it doesn't matter, call them into our lives and they'll, they'll, they'll work in our favor for us to keep us on the right path and, um, present the outcome that's positive for us. I love that. So, your mom is listening. She's watching. She's here. Yeah. Again, I know. I I talked to her during my breath work. I know it it, it, it was very cool though. I mean, it was like I I just it, to be able to release so much energy like during and that again like I I, I kind of kid when I said it's ten years of therapy, but it really is ten years of therapy. Well, it's somatic, right? You're getting it out of your body, and a lot of times when we're doing talk therapy, not to knock talk therapy. Um, because that's definitely very beneficial. Um, we can be reliving traumas or trying to understand things. And some things we're just never really going to understand. 
we just have to learn to accept, but get them out of our body. And when you were talking about your, the little boy, your little boy, um, I call that shadow work. Like you're, you're stepping into your shadow to go and, and reclaim that little boy or um, tell him like, look, look how cool our life is. Look what we've created. Like, come join me. Don't leave that energy spinning in the past, you know, stuck over there. Let's bring that energy forward and incorporate, incorporate your, your inner child into the man that you are today. Mm, that's well said. That's what's well said. Uh, anyways, huge fan, huge fan of breath work. Um, it's, it's actually, I'll let, I'll let you in on a little secret just with a friend and hopefully no one's listening, but like, I think that might be like, it's in my future. Like, I think that that's like, that's Ooh. a modality that I would like to like, because it was so beneficial to me and like so beneficial to me in like such a short period of time. Like it was so easy to kind of like, like hold on to that or back, back to talk therapy. And I agree. It's very important, but I think it's really, really hard to have that talk therapy without that ego being in the way, you know, because it's really until, until you've done some deep, like, again, I use breath work until you've done some deep breath work. You don't even realize where your ego is. It just always appears. Um, mm -hmm. and, and again, with me, I was able to kind of be like, this isn't your space anymore. You know, I, I teach, um, I teach women when I work with them, you know, one on one upstairs and share money and my team here um, and, and through joyful chair that what we, what we want to do is connect with our highest selves, like try to get that ego stepping out of the way. You know, our egos are there to protect us for sure. But when we are talking to our highest self, I call it the goddess within, or you're, you know, when we're taught in Sunday school, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You know, when, when you're living your life through your light, through that highest self and not through the ego, you're happier, you're more joyful, you're more peaceful. Things move and flow. Not to say, you know, life isn't going to throw shit at you. It's still going to throw shit at you, but your vibration is higher. And so the, the shit doesn't stick. It just bounces off of you. Maybe slowly, not, not saying it's not going to be painful, but it, it, you have a, you have a, a force field. The force is with you. The for, uh, you know what you brought up a great point too and that um you know your ego's job is to protect you your ego your your ego's job is your boxing gloves right it's to punch mm -hmm. it's to punch away you know and when you can let that guy go in a little bit and and, and you can be a little bit more vulnerable um that, that that's where the that, that's where the healing belongs because you know all of those boxing gloves are hiding wh where the work needs to be you know and i guess mm -hmm. that's i guess that's why i was like you know i mentioned that you know i had to push my ego aside a little bit there um, well, it takes a lot of it, it takes a lot of energy to lead with your ego because you're you're constantly masking and creating a facade and something that's not authentic and something that's not true. And um, that is energy that if I if I'm not spending my time creating that uh, mask, mm -hmm. then I can use that energy in a in a softer way to create space for somebody else to come in and for my own highest self to step forward. Your ego is like, it, when, when you talked about like the shit, you know, hitting you or, or whatever and, and how it hits you, you know, your ego's job is to react to that. But if you can get past the ego, then, then you, you're in a much better place to respond to that. And, and when you yeah. respond to something as opposed to react to something, at least in my experience, when I respond to something, when I take the beat, and sometimes it's just a beat, but when I take the beat to respond, um, then th there's, the, well, there's certainly no other apologies I need to come with, you know, <laughs> the lack of react, reacting to a situation, you know what I mean? Um, but, but, but when you take the moment to respond, then, then you're not giving it the energy that it wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're not feeding the beast you're not feed. you're not you're not feeding the beast you know yeah that's so yeah. Wild. but uh earlier on you know I, i'm just so happy with like this time of my life you know and and being a conscious being because i think again when you're young you're not a conscious being you're just a being you're just being you're just being and you're not a a, a conscious being so um you know back to back to us being old together yeah and, yeah you know? it's it's better over here I agree. I wish, I wish I learned it earlier, but there's no way to do it, right? Yeah. Good times, though. Really good times being unconscious. <laughs> no, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> Speaking of the years of regret. You know, we call those my 20s, you know. I just... Right, 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 right. 
It's so wild, man. But you know, it's the beauty industry, right? Like back to us, you know, we are such love based people. We're, we're such a, a tribe of um, givers and artists and creatives. And, you know, all that is a loving vibration. Not to say we don't have an industry filled with a lot of egos because we definitely do as well. But I definitely feel like there's a shift that's happening on the planet, first of all, but also in the beauty industry where a lot of us are are waking up to, I want to be a good citizen of hu- humanity. And, you know, I want to provide a loving touch to my guests. And I want to have a new love and be inspired by my craft and the people around me and the spaces that I'm in. And we have just the capacity to touch and move so many people's lives that that other people don't do the work that we do. I agree completely. I mean, it's, I think it's about controlling our environments, you know, and there's so many people that are in our, uh, are in our environments, you know, our, our entire, our entire industry is based around relationships. There's no yep. two ways about it. You know, like no matter where you look in your relation, in your business, it's all about relationships with other people. That's what we do. We're in the relationship business. Yeah. I tell my team here, like the moment you take a connection that you've made with somebody that you met in a restaurant or bathroom or, you know, even a walk-in, for instance, and yet that person has pre-booked with you, you have shifted that connection into a relationship. Like, and that, that's, that's what, that's our goal. We want to build relationships. We want to move connection into long lasting relationships or impactful relationships, no matter when the contract ends, mm. make a difference in people's lives and, um, and be able to receive, you know, I've learned so much from my guests. They've really helped to form me into the woman that I am today. Okay. Two, two, two final questions that we're jumping out because believe it or not, we're just at an hour, which is amazing. Oh my goodness. We can just chit, 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 chat. Oh, it's like one, it's like one drive to school there, Vanessa. Right. I know. I didn't make you sing this time or anything. Oh my God. I could if you want. <laughs> you can always sing. You always, you maybe, always Maybe we should rock out some Taylor Swift and then, you know, you'll get even more views or whatever. If I, if I rock out Taylor Swift, it'll be the opposite of more views. I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> but if you rock out Taylor Swift, maybe. Um, so, uh, you know, it's the classic question. Like, like, what would you tell your younger self, A, or B, what, what advice do you give to, uh, to, to young stylists uh, coming into the industry? I would, t- I would tell my younger self a mantra that I still say to myself today, which is I will always have everything that I need and enough to share. Yeah. And um, I think that's that's powerful. That puts me in a position of abundance and not of lack. What was your second question? It's kind of the, it's the same question. Like essentially, like if you were to advise a younger hairstylist, like what what would that advice be? Um, to to advise a younger stylist, I would say um, as much as you focus on honing your craft behind your chair. Hone in on your uh, your soft skills, your personal development, your your uh, connection with with spirit, whatever that looks like to you. Your connection to Mother Earth, to Gaia, getting grounded and connected, and and really learning how to live in a heart space and um, set your ego aside. Mm. I love that. I, I wish somebody would have told me that when, you know, we were 19 driving to school. Like I'd have saved myself a lot of time and trouble. No, you wouldn't have because you wouldn't have believed them because that's what you, true. you know, like, like it, like <laughs> you, you got to go through the hard, you know, that, that that's what creates the soft spot, you know, got to go through to get to yeah, exactly. Nobody's uh, no, we're born with the soft spot. We fight the soft spot. We find the soft spot. Like that, that seems to be the journey of it, you know, and, 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 you know, that resistance is also part of the, uh, is part of the journey, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really, I mean, you're a parent, you know, you know, like, yep. you know, you can advise your kid as much as you want, but they've got to experience it themselves. And I can look back at that and know that I did the same thing. Oh yeah. I did hear that advice once. It wasn't good then, but it's great now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow. Vanessa, how can people find you? Um, you can find me at joyfulchair.com. You can find me at mageinmaine.com or on Instagram at joyfulchair, at mageinmaine, at mod hair. And um, yeah, 
And any yeah. and if you have any like speaking engagements for Vanessa, I highly recommend it. Um, it, it's it, it's a life changing kind of conversations. They're certainly uh, again, not to be hyperbolic, but it, it it's life changing opportunities. I think is it, it, is a great way to say it. But Vanessa, thank you for your well. First off, friend to friend, I love you. I adore. I you. love you. Thank you for the uh the, the the thirty years of friendship or the thirty. I guess we can say thirty plus now. The thirty plus years. Yeah, of, I think we're like thirty two, maybe. Oh, you know what though. I'm going to call you out a little bit. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to call yeah. you out. However, I do want to have this conversation. Like one of the coolest things we ever did together. And for anybody that's listening in, Vanessa actually went to high school with Dave Chappelle and early, 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 early on in Dave Chappelle's career. Like he wasn't even the Dave Chappelle at that point. He was just a skinny, loud kid with a microphone. Um, but we, we, we got to, uh, we got to hang out with him and we, we met him. Oh yeah, I forgot. We got to hang out with him. He came and, out just and everything and then like we talked for like an hour after the show it was just it was just uh, me you i know steph was it was actually here's what's crazy um it was exactly 31 years ago because it was the first time that steph and i it was our first date post david being born you know so that was that was the first time that we kind of had ever like left her behind and we went out and then we ended up hanging out with uh with dave you know for about an hour after uh, after the show i don't was whitmore there i think whitmore was there too I have to ask yeah. him next time I see him, but that that was that was super cool. And then you know what's great, and we talked about it, like you know, like um, like proud of friend success. Like it was kind of cool, like right. not that Dave was even a friend, but just to kind of go like, oh man, I'm. I met that dude, you know, like, we yeah, have, like, yeah. like, that's my dog, you know, even though he would have no, he he would not remember me from anything, you know what I mean? Um, But, but that was just a very cool kind of thing and to, to kind of watch his career, like move on. And then, you know, I, I, I felt permission to yell at the TV when he walked away from 50 million bucks. Like, what are you doing? You fool. <laughs> But uh, certainly, um, certainly, as those years have passed, I understand that 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 uh, you know uh, sometimes when you uh, when you're in for a Ferrari, you don't want to sell your soul, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I understand that now. I understand that, but certainly in those days, you know, again, being young and being like whatever, you're yelling at the TV like you can't walk away from fifty million dollars, you know. But but that was that. that I was, need you to make me laugh. <laughs> exactly, it's your job. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's pretty funny. That's pretty cool. Have you talked to Dave? Have you seen him? I haven't seen him or talked to him in a long time. Um, I did go to his show a few years back when he was here in D.C. And he's done some benefit things for the Duke Ellington School, which is my alma mater. And, you know, he's a he's an, an awakened being, living consciously, funny as hell and um, forging his own path. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. He, he does a whole bit about that Duke Ellington thing. I'm pretty sure. Like when he, when he went, there. I think I saw, I think I saw a bit cause I was thinking about you when he was saying, when he was saying the talk. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. We got to get out of here. Vanessa. Love you. Love you. Bunch I of love you. Love you. Thank, Thank you for well, having me. Of course. And, um, you know, I, we will see you on the road and we'll get to hang out soon. Yay. Love and light. Love and light. Thank you very much. Vanessa. Thank you very much for joining us on your day. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.